peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In the waters of baptism, Mary O'Rourke died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May she now share with him eternal glory.
Good morning, everybody. Those at the back, can you hear me? Oh, thank you. We are gathered here this morning to pray for the happy repose of Mary Oruk. We thank God for her life. We thank God for the many blessings she received in this life. We thank God for the member of her family, for Patrick and the children, and all her brothers and sisters and friends. As we accompany her home on this day, we pray that the soul of Mary Oruk and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God and Father, it is our setting faith that your son who died on the cross was raised from the dead. The first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. Grant that through this mystery your servant Mary Oruk, who has gone to her rest in Christ, may share in the joy of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. And we invite Elaine for the first reading. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We want you to be quite certain, sisters and brothers, about those that have died, to make sure you do not grieve about them, like the other people who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and that it will be the same for those who have died in Jesus. God will bring them with him. We can tell you this from the Lord's own teaching, that any of us who are left alive until the Lord's coming will not have any advantage over those who have died. With thoughts such as these, you should comfort one another. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And for the response, Sam. Response, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me along the right path, he is true to his name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff. With these you give me comfort. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Then Siobhan comes for the gospel acclamation while we all stand. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. If we have died with Christ, then we shall live with him. If we hold him, then we shall reign with him. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still, and trust in me. There are many rooms in my father's house. If they were not, I should have told you. 
I am going now to prepare a place for you, and after I've gone and prepared you a place, I shall return to take you with me, so that where I am, you may be too. You know the way to the place I am going, Thomas said. Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. I must confess that I've not met Mary, but I've seen Patrick a few times in church. And I remember the day he walked into the sacristy one morning, asking me to pray for Mary. And then a few days afterwards, we received the sad news of her passing away. Death is one of the things we cannot avoid, but we can make it a thing of joy if we look at it from the point of view of Jesus Christ. If you love somebody, you want to be with the person always. So because we love God, we love Jesus, we want to be with him. And that is why we believe that when a Christian dies, he or she goes back to Jesus Christ. And uh, the gospel says there are many rooms in heaven for everyone. I believe uh, Mary has gone to prepare a place for Patrick and the children. And uh, like the first reading told us, we shouldn't worry as people who do not have hope. I am very sure that you will see Mary again, but not in this kind of atmosphere, not in this kind of painful environment, in a place where there is peace, there is joy, and there is no pain. It will be the best place to meet with Mary again. So she has gone before to prepare a place for all of you. And if you love Mary, pray for her. Your prayers will connect with her more than your tears. Your prayers will bring back wonderful memories of Mary. I know you all have very wonderful things you remember about Mary. At least when Claire will read out the eulogy, we will remember a few things, a few wonderful things about Mary. But now, let us reassure ourselves that by virtue of our baptism, when we die, our souls go back to God, where it belongs. So Mary has gone before us to wait for us, not to go away from us, just to wait for us. And although we may not find her physically, but when we look into our hearts, we find her in our hearts. That is where she is now. So my dear friends, let us pray that the good Lord who created her, baptized her, fed her with the Eucharist, anointed her with the Holy Spirit, will receive her soul in heaven. Amen. My dear friends, let us now stand for the bidding prayers. And I invite uh, Pauline. God, the Almighty Father, raised Christ, his Son, from the dead. With confidence, we ask him to save all his people, living and dead. For Mary, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that she may now be admitted to the company of the saints. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For our sister Mary, who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, 
that she may be raised up on the last day. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends, for Mary's brother Kevin, her father Joe, and her mother Rose, for all who have helped us, we pray also for all who have helped us that they may have the reward of their goodness. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For the family and friends of our sister Mary, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all who are assembled here in worship and to worship in faith, that we may be gathered again in God's kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We bring all our prayers and petitions, spoken and unspoken, to the intercession of Mary, Mother of Christ, as we say. Hail, Hail Mary, Mary, full, full of, grace, of grace, the, the Lord, Lord is with thee. thee. Blessed, blessed art thou amongst women, women and, and blessed, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, sinners now, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. God, our shelter and strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed sister Mary Oruk and grant her the fullness of redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Let us stand. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we, assemble, as we humbly present to you this sacrificial offering, O oh Lord, for the salvation of your servant Mary O'Rourke, we beseech your mercy that she who did not doubt your son to be a loving savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly really right and just that we our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for as, on, for as one alone he accepted death so that we might all escape from dying. As one man he chose to die so that in your sight we may all live forever. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy. Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. 
Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph as spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the sense of whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pregnant church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, the other of bishops and all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant, Mary Oruk, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who we are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you are God as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord through whom you bestow on the world all that is good.
through him and with him and in him. O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, I'm formed by divine teaching. We dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. Now, by the help of your mercy, we may always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give, give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, Lord Jesus Christ, fit your own misery, eat your body, drink your blood, let it not be with condemnation, but held in mind. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will change our mortal bodies to conform with his glorified body. Let us pray. Please stand. Lord God, whose son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant us strengthened by it. Our sister Mary Rook may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. And I invite Claire for the eulogy. First of all, I'd just like to thank you all for being here. Um, it's really comforting to see so many people here who have come to show love and respect for my mum. Although there was never any chance that I'd ever turn down the opportunity to write and read a eulogy for my mum, to take that one final moment to share publicly how proud I am of her, to share the story of her life and to try to express how much she meant to me and to all of us. But despite all this, writing this eulogy was the single most difficult task I've ever had to do. I set out first to find out what a eulogy is. Apparently it's a speech in praise of someone, to talk about their life, the love you had for them, and how special they were to you. I couldn't figure out at first why it felt so impossible to do, but then it hit me. It felt impossible because it is impossible. There are no words in the English language, the Irish language, or any other language on God's green earth that could ever encompass, sum up, or explain the absolute pride and love that we have for her or how much she meant to us. So with all that being said, I've given it my best shot. When I asked people to tell me about my mum, I wasn't surprised at the feedback I got. Almost unanimously, people recalled her beautiful, cheerful smile, her kind and caring nature, and her signature catchphrase when answering the house phone, 1410. No one will ever forget our landline number. Even to this day, people still say to us, is it still 1410? <laughs> Born in Belfast in the 1940s and raised in South Armagh, Cross Maglen, also known as Bandit Country, she was affectionately referred to by her peers as Mary Fuzz, and this was due to her beautiful head of Irish curls. She grew up alongside her beloved late brother Kevin Hurty and was often the victim of her little brother's mischief, like the time he put a spider in her porridge or the time he poured his porridge into the coat pocket of a visiting neighbour and blamed it on my mum. But my mum took the blame for it as well because that was my mum all over. Her forgiving nature and her staunch loyalty for those that she loved was testament of the person that she was. But it wasn't all practical jokes and blackguarding between my mum and my uncle Kevin. Their relationship was very special and my uncle Kevin loved his big sister just as much as she loved him. He referred to her affectionately as our lassie. The love he had for my mum would be evident every now and again. Like the time when they were playing in the fields of Cross Maglem and mum fell into a ditch of nettles. Kevin was inconsolable crying because my mum was hurt until mum had to tell him I don't know what you're crying for I'm the one who fell not you <laughs> mum moved to Belfast for work when she was 16 years old and she spent 10 years working as a civil servant but this was at the height of the troubles in the north of Ireland and the frequent bomb scares and constant evacuations in her workplace were beginning to take their toll mum wanted to move out of Belfast to escape the troubles 
she expressed her wishes to her superiors and asked them for a transfer to a different branch. When asked where she'd like to go, Mum said, anywhere who'll take me. The Manchester branch was the first to say they'd take her. And so after receiving her father's blessing, who told her, I'd rather have you in Manchester alive than in Belfast dead. In the summer of 1972, she arrived here in Manchester. Despite having made Charlton her home, she always maintained her love of Irish culture and her social life was centered around the Irish community in Manchester. She'd frequent the Irish social clubs and dance halls with her good friends Pauline Trainer and Margaret Hunt. To name but a few of these venues, they'd visit the Ardre, the Carousel and the Charlton Irish Club. It was on one fateful evening in 1980 in the Carousel on Plymouth Grove in Levenshume that she met the man, the myth, the legend, the one and only Mr. Pat O'Rourke. She'd often recall the story to me. She was out with her friend Margaret Dunnigan and Dad was out with his friend Michael Logan when they met on the staircase of the carousel. He later asked her out to dance and Mum obliged, even though in Mum's words, he had two left feet. In the following weeks, despite Mum's best efforts to avoid him, having decided she was sick of men, my dad's relentless pursuit of the woman who'd captured his heart finally won her over, or some might say, wore her down. One year later, in this very church that we're gathered in today, they took each other's hand in marriage. Theirs was a marriage of love and laughter, with my mum's cousin recalling how they'd come home drunk after a night out, and he'd always hear my mum say to my dad, Love you, Pat. Their marriage spanned over more than four decades, 42 years to be exact. Their devotion to each other eventually led to the creation of her three pride and joys, my eldest brother Paddy, my other brother Sean and myself. Growing up I remember so many funny little anecdotes of how she'd show me love, like the time that I took an ocean to become a vegetarian and mum, petrified that this was the beginning of an eating disorder, took matters into her own hands and began smuggling bacon into my cabbage or the time she tried to single-handedly propel my acting career by writing a letter to the BBC asking them to sign me up. It was so embarrassing, she sent photos of me. But all of these stories only demonstrates the lengths that she'd go to and the love that she had for us, her three babies. Despite her best efforts to further my acting career, unbeknownst to her, her role as a nurturing mother prepared me for what would eventually be my true calling. The values that she instilled in me, including the importance to always see the best in people, even when it's difficult, have led me to my profession as a nurture practitioner, and the rest of my career will be a part of my mum's legacy. Despite mum's health declining in the last few years, she always maintained her sense of fun. She continued her love of Irish music, never missing her Wednesday night full Irish radio show with her dear, dear friends, Marty and Annette Logan, who were both watching from Ireland. She remained a devoted wife, auntie and mother to the end, and her love for me, my brothers, her nieces and my dad were second only to the love she had for the dog, Fitzy. This love will live on through all of us, and we know that she'll always be watching over us. And until we see you again, Mum, we love you so, so much. We thank everybody for your presence and uh, we will now have the final commendation, the last farewell for Mary Baruch. May I ask you to please stand. Our sister Mary O'Rourke has fallen asleep in Christ, confident in our hope of eternal life. Let us commend her to the loving mercy of our Father and let our prayers go with her. 
She was adopted as God's, son, God's daughter in baptism and was nourished at the table of the Lord. May she now inherit the promise of eternal life and take her place at the table of God's children in heaven. Let us pray also on our own behalf that we who mourn and are saddened may one day go forth with our sister Mary to meet the Lord of life when he appears in glory. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Mary in the sure and certain hope that, together with all who have died in Christ, she may rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings with which you bestowed upon Mary in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant Mary, and help us who remain to comfort her, to comfort one another with assurances of faith, until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our sister Mary forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace, let us take Mary Oruk to her place of rest. Okay. 
Hill Cross McGlen Around by the gap of Mount Norris And home by Blackwater again Where the girls are so fair and so hearty Unfair are you find near or far But where are the boys that can court them Like the boys from the county Armagh It's my old Irish home Far across the foam Although I've often left it In foreign lands to roam No matter where I wander Two cities near or far Sure my heart is at home in all Ireland In the county of Armagh There's one fair county in Ireland With memory so glorious and grand Where nature has lavished its bounty It's the orchard of Ireland's green land I love its cathedral city Once founded by Patrick so true And it bears in the heart of its bosom The ashes of Brian Burr it's my old Irish home, far across the foam. Although I've often left it in foreign lands to roam, no matter where I wander, through cities near or far, sure my heart is at home in old Ireland. In the county of Armagh I've travelled that part of the county Through Newtown, Fork Hill, Cross, McGlen Around by the gap of Mount Norris And home by Blackwater again where the girls are so fair and so hearty Unfair are you find near or far But where are the boys that can court them Like the boys from the county Armagh It's my old Irish home Far across the foam Although I've often left it In foreign lands to Cities near or far, sure my heart is at home in all Ireland, in the county of Armagh. There's one fair county in Ireland With memory so glorious and grand Where nature has lavished its bounty It's the orchard of Ireland's green land I love its cathedral city Once founded by Patrick so true And it bears in the heart of its bosom The ashes of Brian Burr it's my old Irish home, far across the foam. Although I've often left it in foreign lands to roam, no matter where I wander, through cities near or far, sure my 
my heart is at home in old Ireland, in the county of Armagh. I've travelled that part of the county, through Newtown for Kilcross McGlen, around by the gap of Mount Norris, and home by Blackwater again Where the girls are so fair and so hearty Unfair are you find near or far But where are the boys that can court them Like the boys from the county Armagh It's my old Irish home Far across the foam left it in foreign lands to roam no matter where I wander to cities near or far sure my heart is at home in old Ireland in the county of Armagh Bounty, it's the orchard of Erin's Greenland. I love its cathedral city, once founded by Patrick so true, and it bears in the heart of its bosom the ashes of Brian Baru. It's my old Irish home, far across the foam. Glen, around by the gap of Mount Norris, and home by Blackwater again, where the girls are so fair and so hearty, unfair are you find near or far, but where are the boys that can court them, like the boys from the county Armagh, it's my old Irish home. Far across the foam, although I've often left it in foreign lands to roam, no matter where I wander, to cities near or far, sure my heart is at home in old Ireland, in the county of Armagh. There's one fair county in Ireland With memories so glorious and grand Where nature has lavished its bounty It's the orchard of Erin's Greenland I love its cathedral city Once founded by Patrick so true And it bears in the heart of its bosom The ashes of Brian Burr it's my old 
Irish home Far across the foam Although I've often left it In foreign lands to roam No matter where I wander Through cities near or far Show me heart is at home in old Ireland Glen, around by the gap of Mount Norris, and home by Blackwater again, where the girls are so fair and so hearty, unfair are you find near or far, but where are the boys that can court them, like the boys from the county Armagh, it's my old Irish home. Far across the foam, although I've often left it in foreign lands to roam, no matter where I wander, to cities near or far, Charlie Hart is at home in all Ireland. Lavished its bounty, it's the orchard of Erin's Greenland. I love its cathedral city, once founded by Patrick so true, and it bears in the heart of its bosom the ashes of Brian Baru. It's my old Irish home, far across the foam. of Mount Norris and home by Blackwater again where the girls are so fair and so hearty unfair are you find near or far but where are the boys that can court them like the boys from the county Armagh it's my old Irish home far across the foam Although I've often left it 